Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie, with my coffee in my mug again. Um, how are you all this morning? Hope you're all well. Getting excited for Christmas. Hope you're getting things gradually sorted out. So here I am with the Advent calendar for the 16th of December 2023. So every day building up to Christmas. A little positive video just to make you smile for a little while at least. So, Bibbity Bobbity Boo bringing positivity, love to you. So, yeah, because there's so much, so much bad news in the world, isn't there? So many depressing things on the news, etc. So, every day I've just been doing these short videos just to. Just to be a little bit silly, bring a little bit of good news, a little bit of positivity, tell you an inspiring story, you know, just something that will make you smile and then finishing with the Christmas photos and some terrible singing from me. And that's exactly what you're going to get today as well. So, right, okay. Uh, what we're going to talk about today. Oh, well, first of all, I want to say, as always, thank you. For liking, subscribing, for being my members, those of you that are my members, thank you. To anyone who supported me in any way, shape, or form, bought me a Kofi, sent me a super, uh, bought some of my merchandise on my store. And just to let you know, uh, if you do order anything now, it won't arrive in time for Christmas, more or less, certainly. So if you were hoping for something to arrive for Christmas, it probably won't now. But anyway, just thought I'd let you that, you know, don't want you to think it'd be there for Christmas because the cut-off date, I think, was the 14th. Um, okay, so what we're going to talk about today. Well, I like to talk about inspirational stories. Because sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, and I'm the, the world's, you know, I'm as guilty of it as the next person, we don't appreciate all the good things that we have in our lives sometimes, do we? I think sometimes we, our society is designed that way, that you're always encouraged to want more, aren't you, to, you know, a bigger car, a bigger house, uh, a new kitchen, uh, this, that, and the, they're always looking, aspiring, looking at what other people have got and always aware of what you haven't got more than what you have got. And, you know, it, it, I, I really try hard every morning when I get up even just a simple thing like making a coffee uh, or, you know, coming downstairs, pottering around my house. My house is not the best house in the world, but... It's not the worst house in the world, either. You know, we've uh, just the fact I've got a roof over my head, running water, you know, food on the table, all these things some people don't have, of course. And sometimes we're so in our little bubble, we don't realise there's a big world out there. There's a big world out there and we don't understand that we were just lucky to be born where we were born, really, you know, uh, there but for the grace of God, go us. We could be immigrants. We could be uh, fleeing from war, etc. We're not, we're lucky, you know, we're not facing that. And so we we should, um, sorry, I'm just going to stop that ticker now. We, we should be grateful for that and we should appreciate the fact that we are lucky and be tolerant towards people who are not quite so lucky. Okay, so what I've found that I'm going to look at, uh, I'm going to look at one story off this blog. Now, this is a blog of inspiring stories of courage and bravery. And there are lots of stories on there. I'm going to just show one today, probably as the, as the advent calendar goes along, I will pick other ones as well. And this is the compassion blog. And this particular article was written in September, uh, uh, on September the 26th, 2019. But there are lots of stories on this blog, lots of different stories. This is just one. Okay, so this uh, particular story is talking about Florence. Florence Lomariwo, 
and her crusade against female, female genital mutilation or FGM. And her crusade started with her own narrow escape. I mean, this is a foul thing, isn't it? Uh, you know, it's just awful and it's still practiced. Uh, it's even practiced in Britain, you know, by uh, people from different cultures. Uh, and there's a real campaign against it because it, it just really is an awful, awful uh, thing. So let's read Florence's story. So her father had nine wives and 77 children. It would have been, maybe he could have done with, you know, with having his what's it chopped off really, to be honest, 77 children, nine wives and 77 children. Florence's mother, his ninth wife, had six children to raise. She was often unable to provide for their basic needs of food and clothing, let alone their education. I mean, for us, we cannot imagine that. You know, I had one child and that was difficult enough. Um, how, how can you possibly provide for six children when you literally haven't got any money yourself? You know, but of course, they're probably, see this, the, uh, I don't like to, I don't know if they're Catholics. I presume they're Catholics and they're against contraception. This is where the Pope gets on my nerves uh, because he, he, you know, the Pope needs to say, yes, use contraception. And I suppose he sort of can't because the Bible said, let there be life. Um, but I don't think God was really thinking, you know, go and have 77 children when he said, let there be life anyway. So that was where uh, Florence's background. Her father, nine wives, seven, seven children. Her mother, his ninth wife, had six children to raise. She was often unable to provide for their basic needs of food and clothing, let alone their education. In fact, out of a total of 38 girls in her father's family, Florence was the only one to complete her education. Good God, imagine having 37 sisters. You know, in some ways it'd be brilliant, but in other ways, not really. Anyway, my father did not believe that education was necessary for girls, says Florence. I had to sneak to school and return unnoticed. One day I forgot to change out of my school uniform. And my father saw me. He was angry and beat me up for bringing disgrace to the family. It was only after her father's death that Florence began to openly attend school to the disgust of her older brothers and the community at large. Only her mother supported her educational pursuits. And this is another thing that I always find ironic. You know, in our society, uh, children don't want to go to school, do they, most of the time? And But they, again, they don't know what it's like to not be able to go to school, to, to crave an education and not be able to have one. When she turned nine, Florence's caregivers planned the FGM ceremony for her. The brutal ritual involves the partial or complete cutting away of a girl's external genitalia. It became illegal in Kenya in 2011. So it's illegal now, but it's still being practiced. According to the latest Kenya Demographic and Health Survey of 2014, there may have been another one since then. The rate of FGM is declining from 27% in 2008 to 21% in 2014. But that is still far too many. I wonder if I can find the... Um, don't worry, I'm not going. I, mean, I thought I was going off the site, then it went into a panic. So let's see, rate of FGM. Now, of course, this is just Kenya. I mean, it, it happens in other countries. Oh, well, that's good. So apparently at the moment, it's 15% in Kenya, 15%. So it has gone down. Still too many. Even 1%, of course, is too many. 
but that's good so it's gone from 27 percent to 21 percent and where i've just looked up there it apparently at the moment is 15 percent so at least it is going down we've got to look at the positive haven't we so fgm goes hand in hand with another common issue in kenya early marriage fgm the cultural rite of passage from girlhood to womanhood has traditionally signalled a girl's readiness for marriage. Countrywide, approximately 26% of girls are married before 18 and 6% are married by the age of 15. Florence learned that after she underwent FGM, she would be married. An old man from a neighbouring village had approached my family to arrange a marriage with me, says Florence. He wanted me to be his fourth wife. At the time, Florence was in the third grade. Oh dear, her oldest brother, now head of the family, had already accepted half of the customary bride price from the man, which included camels, cows and goats. According to, to, to tradition, after the ritual cutting, she would become the old man's property. I'm just wondering, how did these traditions ever you know, where did they come from? You know, who sat there one day, or some man, obviously, and said, oh, I know what we'll do when girls get to, you know, an age where they're going to be married off. We'll cut off their genitals. You know, who came up with that brilliant, fantastic idea? Anyway, so Florence took a desperate step. She ran away from home. I did not want to be married early because it would shatter all my dreams, Florence said. I ran away from home, living with well-wishers and teachers who supported my desire to complete my education and make something of myself. Her determination paid off. After finishing secondary school, Florence enrolled in a teacher's college and later graduated with a degree in education. Now, here I go now, I'm filling up. It's just, but it's, it's good tears. How fantastic that she managed to do that. She then married the man of her own choice, a privilege that few women her age knew. Now Florence had the credentials and platform she needed to effect change. So Florence now runs a school and rescue centre for girls who escaped FGM and early marriage. The primary school in the town of Kemolingot, Kenya, is no ordinary school. In addition to educating local children, Chemolingot Primary School is a rescue centre for girls saved from FGM and early marriage. Girls who are scheduled for FGM will flee to the school for uh, safety. Other young girls who have already undergone the procedure will sometimes run away from their husbands to the school for safety. Boys who are victims of child labour and violence also seek refuge at the centre. Florence has been instrumental in transforming the centre into a boarding school securing funding from various sources so that these vulnerable children have somewhere to stay. Today, through Lawrence's dedication and hard work, Chemolingot Primary School is home to more than one sorry, uh, Chemolingot Primary School is home to more than 150 young girls who have been rescued from FGM and early marriage. Among the girls who have found refuge at the primary school in the past, 11 are currently attending public universities and colleges and 49 are attending various high schools around the country. But Florence's activism is not without risk. Some men from the community don't want the status quo to change. Well, the men won't want it to change, will they? Because the men, some, you know, at the end of the day, they're having a great life. You know, they get a young girl to marry, um, well, more than one. Seven, seven wives, was it? Uh, oh, no, he had seven, seven children, her dad. But, yeah, so they're allowed to have all these wives. So of course, they won't want the status quo to change. 
She's very brave, Florence, because I expect she's uh, experienced a lot of um, aggression, a lot of resistance. Recently, an angry group of men wielding canes confronted Florence. They had come to claim the wife promised by her family to a member of the group. She was a 14-year-old girl. God, how terrifying, how terrifying for that girl who had sought protection at the school. The mob accused Florence of undermining their culture and threatened to teach her a lesson. Thankfully, the other teachers protected her and the police arrived in time to prevent any violence. So at least the police did help her. Still, despite the danger, Florence remains committed to her mission. Now Florence is at helping expand protection to even more children. So many children in the world that don't even get a chance to be children, do they? And not only uh, in Kenya, you know, in the UK, all over the world. So many children suffering. But anyway, we're not, we, we're focusing on the positivity this morning. In 2016, Florence's church... African Inland Church Chemolingot partnered with Compassion to launch a child development centre. As an outstanding champion of children, Florence became the chair of the committee overseeing the centre. Now there are 252 local children in the programme. Wow. Through the centre, Florence is helping ensure that the children in her community receive ongoing education about their rights. She's also making sure parents are provided with training about the dangers of FGM. FGM. We take a zero tolerance stance on child abuse and we have made it clear to all our children's caregivers that action will be taken against anyone who undermines the rights of a child, says Florence. What's more, caregivers of children uh, signed commitment saying their children can attend school and will not undergo harmful cultural practices. In the future, as the registered children grow older, the centre plans to provide a Bible-based alternate rite of passage programme. Yeah, and that's important because, you know, culture is important. You can't change a, a you can't change a culture overnight. Culture is ingrained, with, you know, in, uh, in societies. So to try and provide an alternative. So this rite of passage, uh, you know, it, it's going to happen. You know, you can't eradicate it overnight. But, yeah, if they take out this extreme, I mean, it's so extreme. You know, to us it just seems unbelievable, doesn't it? But, of course, it's just commonplace or has been. So I'm so glad to see that it's gone from 20 something percent to 15 percent. Just to, I know it's not low enough, but at least it is going down. So Damaris is one of the girls in the compassion program whose caregivers have committed to protect her from early marriage and FGM. Bless. We understand that the key to dealing with this problem is continuous education, says Florence. We envision a future in which there will be a significant drop in the number of children that suffer FGM in early marriage. Oh, oh. There are some people you really think, <laughs> Look, I know I'm really going for it now, getting upset, but some people, they are like angels, aren't they? She's like an angel helping. She might not, she can't help everybody, but she's helping the ones that she can. And... Um, it is almost like they are angels. Some people, what they achieve, you know, it's amazing. Despite their circumstances, they still manage to achieve great things. And, you know, it's it's incredible. So now the girls in her care are benefiting from Florence's passion and dedication. There's an undeniable wave of change. <laughs> really, it's really getting to me, this. Uh, sweeping Chimolingot. 
in some cases, the school enrolment of girls is doubling and tripling previous enrolment numbers. Still, there is much more that needs to be done and Florence will keep fighting. She knows that the next generation of women need her voice and courage to continue paving the way. Thank you for standing with advocates like Florence to fight for the rights of children. It takes all of us together to create a world with opportunity for all. And you can sponsor a child. Sponsor a child today to ensure she receives her rights. Let me just have a look at that. Sponsor a girl and help her overcome the many obstacles she's facing. So if you look at, you know, every, the thing is, charity is difficult at the moment, isn't it? Because... Um, because we're all under this cost of living crisis. And of course, you can't help everybody. But this is interesting because I didn't know about this. So if you can sponsor a child, I'd have to look into it and see what the charity is. So this is Compassion in Jesus' name, it says. So I'd have to look into it more and see where is the money going. Is there a, you know, I don't give to charities. Uh, that have CEOs earning fortune. So um, if you're thinking of it, just look into it first. I mean, I'd be quite happy to donate directly to Florence, you know, but uh, not to big charities, no. <sighs> okay, so that is Florence's story. That's your story for today your positive story, inspiring story, you know, somebody who um, fought through adversity to really make a difference in the world. You know, you've got to think about what you're giving to the... I mean, you don't have to do something as dramatic of, as what Florence had done, but you, you should really leave some sort of positive contribution in the world. You know, you've got to think about what are you contributing, even if it's just... I don't know, smiling at people every day and not being nasty to them. That's a contribution. You know, just not being a twonk. <laughs> just don't be a twonk. I feel like I can smell burning. I thought, is my wig off? <laughs> but anyway, I don't think I don't think I can. I don't know what it is about anyway. Uh okay, so there you go. Let's a little spell for Florence. I hope her charity carries on. Uh, well, it's not a charity. Her school carries on doing well. Um, so, yeah, now we we sort of, um, as Christmas is coming, I presume there they'll be celebrating Christmas because it sounds like they are Christians. Um, you know, we have to, although we've got bad things, I know there's a lot of you out there that are struggling with various things at the moment, and we've talked about the, the reasons why people might not be looking forward to Christmas. You know, a recent bereavement, a loss of a pet, financial struggles, mental health struggles, physical health struggles, loneliness. You know, there's lots of reasons we might not be looking uh, forward to Christmas. But we also have to count our blessings, don't we? Um, for every little thing that we've got that we value in life. So, bibbity bobbity boo, love and positivity to you. Okay, so now we're going to look at the Christmas pictures to finish off. And I, today, today, Matthew, today I am going to sing uh, Slade. I wish it could be Christmas every day. Oh, I wish it could be Christmas. That's it. It, is, it was Slade, wasn't it? Let's have a look. I just need to find the lyrics. A oh, wizard, wizard. So Slade is uh, another one. I'll, admit, I'll sing that another day. Um, lyrics. Come on, lyrics, lyrics. Yeah, it was Roy Wood and Wizard. So this is what I'm going to sing while uh, I'm showing you the Christmas pictures. Now, <clears throat> I was going to say something else then and it's gone. 
Oh, that's right. I was watching the news last night and it was saying that the old Christmas songs are still the most popular ones. I don't even know any um, Christmas songs, current ones. Leave me, if you know any current Christmas songs that I could sing, leave me, um, leave me a comment and I'll maybe sing those. But yeah, all these, all these ones like Slade and uh, the other ones that I've sang, Happy Christmas, War is Over, etc. They're all old songs. Okay, let's have a look. Let's get it on the uh, Christmas. So I've got some lovely pictures and uh, there's still time to send in Christmas pictures. Anything that's a little bit Christmassy, uh, I will show on here and uh, sing along. Let's get the photo up. Right. Uh, oh, that's uh, anyway. Yeah, so the lyrics are right over the um, the photos, are right over the lyrics. I don't know where else to, how else to move them. Anyway, uh, how can I do that in a different way? I don't know how to do it. Hang on. I need to find another lyrics that's over on the side. That's better. Oh, got these cookies in. Pop up all the time, don't they? Okay, so let's go back to the beginning with the pictures. So excuse the singing. When the snowman brings the snow, well, he just might like to know. He's put a great big smile upon somebody's face. If you jump into your bed, quickly cover up your head. Don't you lock the doors, you know that Santa Claus is on the way. Well, I wish it could be Christmas every day. When the kids start singing and the band begins to play come on sing along oh i wish it could be christmas every day so let the bells ring out for christmas when you sing it oh, sorry when you're skating in the park if the snow cloud makes it dark when your rosy cheeks are gonna light my something, something. Now the frosty paws appear. And they're frozen up my ear. So will I by the fire till the sleet simply knocks them all the way. Well, I wish it could be Christmas every day when the kids start singing and the band begins to play. I think it would help if I did practice this before, but I never do. So let the bells ring out for Christmas when the snowman brings the snow. Well, he just might like to know He's put a great big smile upon somebody's face So if Santa brings the sleigh Along the Milky Way I'll sign my name on the rooftop in the snow Then he may decide to stay Well, I wish it 
could be Christmas every day. Sing along now. When the ba kids start singing and the band begins to play. Oh, I wish it could be Christmas every day. Let the bells ring out for Christmas. Well, I wish it could be Christmas every day. When the kids start singing and the band begins to play. Well, I wish it could be Christmas every day. So let the bells ring out. Oh, Christmas. Ah, there you go. Just when you think the singing can't get any worse, it does. Anyway, I hope that's put a smile on your face. Hope you had a little sing along. I'll be singing uh, other sort of Christmas songs like that. Hopefully, you'll sing along too. But that's it for today. That's it for the 16th of December. That's your advent calendar for today. Bibbity bobbity boo. Positivity for you. And I will see you definitely tomorrow with the next advent calendar, if not before. So remember to live and love wisely, carefully, count your blessings. And I'll see you really soon in the next video. And until then, may your God always go with you.